Hey everybody, this is Brittany with the Homestead Trail. Happy 4th of July weekend. Today's video is a little different. It's not a homesteading video, it's a horse video, but we wanted to show you guys how we got our horse paddocks all set up. So we're not making this video to brag or because we think we did this amazing job or anything like that. This was absolutely a DIY by a couple people who frankly didn't know what they were doing most of the time. But what happened was I set up in, in search of ad for horses for sale on Facebook. And since horses are really pets, they're livestock, but they're mostly pets, um, I figured some people might be kind of on the fence about posting their horses for sale. So I thought maybe if we posted a picture of our setup with the in search of ad to show that the horses are gonna be in a safe, good area with good pasture, that maybe we would get more hits on it and we definitely did honestly I think I got more messages and comments asking about how we set up everything than I did for horses for sale so I thought that there would probably be some people out there who would like more information on how we set up everything and how it's working for us so far so when we bought our property three years ago it was not set up for livestock whatsoever um, the only thing we had to work off of was this outbuilding and that's what we based our run-in out of um, but everything else we had to start from scratch for. So we spent a lot of time researching and trying to figure out the best setup for our area. Um, if you're from the Midwest, you know that there's really two seasons for equestrians. There's mud season, and then there's too hot to ride. <laughs> so in order to prevent that mud, that was really priority number one. All right, so this is our setup. Um, as you can see, our girls are enjoying them some uh, afternoon hay there. Um, but right there is our run-in, this is our sacrifice area, and then down there are our two rotational pastures. You can see only one of them is open right now. We've got our water trough, and then underneath the overhang of that run-in is where we keep the hay in the hay net so they don't weigh so much. So let's start with the run-in. Um, the reason why the run-in is deeper than it is wide is because it did come with our property whenever we bought it. It wasn't used for animals. All it was was a roof and four posts holding it up. So we just put the sides on it, um, added a gutter, and turned it to a run-in. Um, it is, I believe, about 16 feet wide and then 30-some feet deep. Um, so it's definitely big enough to fit two horses very comfortably. I think we could fit a third in there as well. Um, it works very well for us. Um, the only thing we still need to do on it is add some kickboards. As you can see, there aren't any inside, um, especially if we were to add a third horse, that would be necessary. But these guys don't really fight or get, you know, get too rambunctious, so we don't have any issues with them kicking the uh, sides yet, but um, that's on our list to do. And then attached to the run-in is our sacrifice area. Um, the reason why they call it a sacrifice area is you're sacrificing some of your pasture in order to create an area for your livestock to be during winter or when it's raining a lot um, so that they're not standing in a foot of mud for months and months on end. Um, this area is roughly 60 feet by 40 feet. It is um, enclosed by wood planks. We've got three, three boards and we've got four gates. Um, there's two gates there that connect to the rotational pastures. You can see the one on the left connects to the left pasture, the one on the right connects to the right pasture, um, and then we just tie the gate to the boards to keep it open. And as you can see, 60 by 40 is plenty of room for two horses. Um, they can even trot and you know canter around here if they start getting rambunctious. You want this area to be big enough to where your horses are comfortable, they're able to get some exercise because this is where they're going to be staying the majority of the winter um, and any time you know, you're experiencing like flooding conditions. The footing in your sacrifice area is really important. Um, what we did was, it was pretty flat here so we didn't have to level anything out luckily, but we laid down this, you can see it's coming up from where the uh, dump truck ran over it and it picked up a corner. but. This is geotextile fabric. We bought it off of Amazon. Um, each roll is like a hundred bucks. We had to buy two rolls to cover everything in, in here, including the run-in. But um, that's geotextile fabric. And what it is, is it's really meant to go underneath like driveways. Um, and it just provides a physical barrier to where your rock isn't gonna get smushed down into the soil to where you have to keep replacing it. For the gravel that we chose, um, this was what was recommended by multiple state department of ags. Um, we used 3 8 inch minus, and what that means is each piece of gravel is no larger than 3 8 of an inch in diameter, and then you also get that limestone dust in there with it too. 
Um, our particular company that, company that we went through, their equivalent to 3 8 inch minus was called 10F. Um, I don't know if that varies between companies or not, or if they just all call it 10F, but um, that's what we went with. And um, this stuff, it's very easy to poop scoop. Um, those pieces just fall right through um, between the tines. Um, it does pack down a little bit, but not too much. And um, we don't have any issues with it, you know, making them sore or um, lame at all. Um, and it doesn't really get stuck in their hooves too bad either. It's pretty easy to, uh, to pick out. So to cover this entire sacrifice area and the run-in by a couple of inches of that gravel, it took a little over 60 tons, which was about $770, um, and that was delivered. Um, excuse me, what are you doing? <laughs> So yeah, this system has worked really well for us. Um, we just bought these two mares. We've had them less than a week, but over winter for about four months, we did have a gelding that was exclusively in the sacrifice area because it was over winter. And as you can see, there were no issues with mud whatsoever. Um, of course, around where they eat, you know, the poop and the you know leftover hay gets pecked down a little bit, but it really isn't an issue at all. And um, you know, it, it maintained very, very well. I was very happy with it. And then for the pastures, um, we've just got two rotational pastures. Our pasture area is not huge. Um, I think it'll be perfect for two horses. Um, we're going to have to see how the grass does here, um, you know, later in July and in August to see if it can maintain with two horses rotating um, before we, you know, buy any more horses. I'd really like to get a mini, but we'll have to see. <laughs> um, but for the fencing, we just use the poly rope that they sell at Roll King. Um, we used wooden posts with the plastic posts in between and um, we did five strands, four of them are hot, one of them is not. Um, you can see we've got an area marked off right here. There was a burn pile from the previous owners and there's just a ton of wire in there so we're going to have to dig all that up and remove it before um, you know, we're really comfortable with the horses walking on it. So there's just kind of a little makeshift uh, this area sectioned off there so ignore that. Um, also the round pen is going to get moved eventually. Um, we've got to get an area set up with some sand um, to set that up but um, once we get that all set up and ready to go that round pen will get moved out of the pasture area and that'll just all be open they were on this side the first four days that we had them and they've been on this side for about four days so you can really see the difference in the grass you can also tell exactly where they've been peeing because that just kills off the grass like crazy but um, you can see how much of a difference four days will make And I don't know what our rotation um, schedule is going to be. Um, right now I'm thinking maybe six days on one side and then flip to the other. We want to give the grass enough time to recover, but we don't want the other side to get, you know, crazy tall either. So um, we're going to have to find that balance. And I'm sure it's going to change as the seasons change as well. Um, you know, mid-August when it's 90 degrees every day, I doubt the grass is going to grow that fast. So um, we're going to have to change it accordingly. But this seems to be working so far. And then for our charger, um, the run-in does have electricity, but where it's located isn't really convenient to where the um, electric fence starts. So what we chose was this Parmac Solar Pack 12, and we have been very happy with it so far. It definitely packs a punch. Um, it's got high levels of voltage, um, no issues with it so far. It's a little pricey, but it has worked very well for us so far. So yeah, that is our setup. Um, it's by no means, you know, expert, um, super fancy or anything, but it certainly works for what we started with and what we had. Um, and I think it'll work out just perfectly for these girls. So um, before we end this video, I'll do a quick uh, introduction with the horses. All right, so this first sweaty girl over here is Miss Bramble. Um, she is 16. She's just a grade quarter horse type Palomino. Um, she's very sweet, but a little bit buddy sour, so we got to work on that. But she is just, she's built beautifully, so I'm really excited to get her out on the trails. And then over here, we've got Miss Willadine. 
Um, Miss Willa Dean is extremely tall. She's over 16 hands. Um, she's got the freezer brand on her neck where she was bred as a racehorse. She is a standard bred. Um, she is 17 and she does need to gain some weight. Um, the previous owners just had her teeth done maybe two weeks ago. They said that her teeth were really bad and so she dropped weight very quickly. So um, we're hoping that maybe with her being on uh, you know, good pasture and we got her on a good grain regimen and she's also eating some alfalfa hay there too. So we're hoping she'll put that weight back on really quick. Um, she's also got a little bit of rain rot on her back, but that's another thing we're treating. Um, other than that, she is extremely sweet. Um, she's just a, you know, whatever you ask, she'll do it type of a type of a girl. So very, very calm. I think she's gonna be awesome uh, confidence builder for us and she's gonna make a great uh, trail mount. So yeah, that is our setup. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave them down in the comments. We'll be happy to answer those for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.